Hello everybody and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3 where I am very upsetty spaghetti <laughs> because I messed up for the first time in a really long time recording one of these uh, episodes, just any episode at all. I don't, in fact, I don't know if I've ever done this before. I did not save the commentary audio for this. I'm sure I've done it before. I just can't think of it. I did not save the commentary for this. I somehow wrote over it on accident and now I am very upset because we did, we find a lot of cool stuff going on. And but here we are. You know, we just we live and we learn. And I'm so sorry you get me talking over, I guess. <laughs> but and this is an episode two where like I popped off because like as you'll see, like we're gonna meet some very interesting people, and I started popping off about like cool mushroom facts, and I was like so excited. I was so excited for it all. I don't even know how this is going to work but we so now i get to like ride along with you guys i guess as we go so <laughs> forgive me i don't know how this is gonna work um but i remember peeking around the corner and i remember being like okay there's people over there there's strange people and i didn't know uh what was up uh i thought they were going to attack me because uh, if if i hit any of the mushrooms or if i blew them up or if i damaged any of them um i have Talk Best watch my step. They like to explode. Not sure what the other mushrooms are. Okay. I do remember being upset that I missed... That I missed the, uh, I missed the nature check there. Um, but yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, myconids. Like, I was like, I didn't know that was a, I didn't even know that was a race of people. Or, I don't know, are, are they people? Are they fungi? Are they both? Like, who knows? You know? I'm like, I don't know. I mean, sure people do know, but I don't know. And I was worried that they were gonna be aggressive at me. Um, uh, but, and I had no idea how to get through this minefield, because everything wants to blow up on you. Um, but yeah, I just, this whole episode, I was like popping off about like cool mushroom sources. Like, I don't know a lot about mushrooms. I'm a, I'm a very amateur, uh, enthusiast about, um, mushrooms in the, in the sense of, uh, like, like medicine or, um, have, like, that. Yeah, there's, I did, I, I think I was thinking if I snuck through for whatever reason, going that <laughs> nothing bad would happen <laughs> but it did and then i was like well oh well i blew music. it all up <laughs> through one creature sing many voices the harmony of an entire collective this is so cool sovereign oh yes she has come she is here the choir fades a single melody rises above the others brassy and commanding I am sovereign. You see a vision. Your lifeless body wrapped in fungal tendrils. Ooh. The sovereign is threatening oh, you. Baby. State your purpose. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I remember here being super stoked about all of this because, for one thing, the idea of mushrooms as a collective, right? That's a really popular theme in a lot of... um. Uh, like mushroom literature, right? Where you're, it's it's sort of a um, a community driven thing, right? Where like mushrooms is like the idea of mushrooms, like the mushroom revolution, is like putting medicine in the back of the hands of people, putting food production back in the hands of like the individual person. But the idea of like a like a singing mushroom, like the the idea of like a song connectivity, like string theory stuff, I was super stoked about it. But here, what what choice did I pick? Seek understanding based on the sovereign song. Yes. Pretty easy. A pretty easy roll. That I just is right. I just barely managed to figure it out. Barely managed to attune myself to the collective. Have experienced recent tragedy. Mm. I love I love this whole thing with the Mykonids. It's so in Oath of the Ancients. I am nature's bulwark where good things grow. I lend my protection. A hey, of Fungal course we have to pick that one. Weave through your mind, seeking your true intent. Then the sovereign drones a new melody. Cautious but welcoming. Descend to me. Let us speak in flesh. The persistent music coaxes you forward. 
The sovereign expects you. Beautiful. Absolutely stunningly gorgeous. The mushroom, the myconids, were designed so beautifully. Uh, they are so amazing. I'm a huge fan of bioluminescence. I'm a huge fan of mushrooms. I'm a huge fan of the idea of mushrooms as like, like I was saying earlier, like a, like, Fungus sort of a, uh, glaze the grotesque creature's oh, face yeah. and body. A voice drifts I mean, they into call it grotesque. as you gaze upon the misshapen servant. Leave this one. Come to me. We must speak. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. But I want to look at them first. Like, look at all the different designs on them. There's, we got like three different ones right here. These shorter ones, though, did make me think. Because it's Durgar, and I was like, a Durgar mushroom person? What? And so I, then I was starting to speculate that maybe they were using the dead bodies. Um, or at first I was worried it was live bodies, but dead or live bodies to, like, grow, essentially. Um, like, they're, the entropic, you know... Mushrooms are just part of the entropic process, right? Like, they are associated with decay, but, like, it's a necessary part of any forest ecosystem. And, like, the connectivity on the roots of mushrooms is wild. They've done some crazy stuff with it. That one, I think that one, that reddish one, was my favorite. Um, very, very pretty. Also, holy cow, look, there's a real guy over here. I say real, that's mean. Um, there's, hmm. there's, a, there's a hobgoblin Ripple guy over here? Could sustain an entire village if seeded properly. And he's like a scientist, and I just wasn't expecting seeing like a fleshy humanoid. I don't know what you would call him, <laughs> but as compared to a mushroom person, seems like a yeah. Good I think I was like, yeah, it's a hobgoblin. Ah, a visitor. You're a welcome sight. But let us observe the customs of the locals. The scholars, uh, as any good tenses, anthropologist would. His voice spills into your skull. The spores connecting mind to mind. Blurg, proud member of the Society of Brilliance, at your service. Or perhaps not. Your mind is far more complex than that of the fungi. Th that's good, thank you. I'm super glad. Understandable. We are small in number and rarely stay in one place I've, for I've never actually heard of this My group. colleagues and I are working to improve conditions in the Underdark. This need not be such a dire, hostile place. I mean, it's already beautiful. Our kind has suffered needlessly for generations. Do you also seek peace among the Myconids? They do seem to have it figured out. I collect mushrooms to sell in the service. Uh, this is where I belong, but right now I can't stay. The draw Truly options aren't remarkable. great. But why come to the Underdark, where they hold so much power? Yeah, that was a dumb move, maybe, honestly. Explain your whole story. You were infected by an illithid tadpole. It's a miracle you're still intact. Yeah, yeah. You must yep. be worried sick, but have no fear. I no, have thank a friend you. who may be able to assist. I, I don't oh, believe you. I hope this is important. Oh, that's blood. right. My Zerkwood samples need constant attention. It I is. kept thinking this adventurer has an illithid tadpole inside her head. I was like, oh, he's talking to a plant. Turned. No he's talking to a plant. No. That's impossible. But intriguing. Oh my Are you gosh. Looking to have it extracted. Yeah, that is, could you imagine, could you imagine like talking to this guy and you're being like, excuse me? And Illithid is your friend, how is that possible? I have broken free from the Elder Brain's yoke. I no longer serve the grand design. I ask that you refrain from violence, while I respect that your opinion of my kind may not change. I'm like, look at him. <laughs> I'm like, what? A collective so, yeah, I don't quest know what it is. What to is the grand design? The gith and enslave all other humanoids. Okay, that's pretty if simple. If that settles matters for the time being, would you like a diagnosis? Open your mind to me. Let us see what lurks within. 
Like, look at him, he's glowing. Like, could you imagine? You're like, excuse me, like walk up to a guy who looks very similar to the people who just like shoved that thing into your brain. And you're like, excuse me, you want me to do, you want me to let you inside my mind, right? This is like a whole thing where you have to take a step back and be like, but the thing is, is like the mind flayers as a group tend to be like evil, right? And like they are enslaved or whatever to these elder brains, which I had vague recollections of that sort of a thing, right? Where there's like a controlling entity, you know? Again, a somewhat of a, a, a collective mindset, except in the exact opposite of like the more peaceful, like community-driven growth of of, of like a, the Mykonid people, right? You have the mind flayers, or you have the like favorite trope in old sci-fi of like the hive mind, right? Where it's like everything is serving one individual or like a small group of individuals to make their lives better right i honestly don't remember the reason but i'm i am gonna let him relax i'm, I'm gonna relax and let his mind search my own because at this point it's like i guess like you know if if a mind flayer can like maybe a mind flayer can fix a mind flayer problem you know and and this you know i've just met him but he seems very different from previous <laughs> illithids so i might as well let him um but as the Meloan's mind pierces yours, the tadpole pulses with power. It feels ten times its size. Alive. Ugh. Awake. Almost smug. This well, is I haven't even used it that much. Unusual. The incubation period should be complete. As should your transformation. But the lava is infused with strange magic. Gross. It appears to be Gross. in some form of stasis. Horrifying? Horrifying. Uh, can you extract it, I guess? No. It appears to be shielded from physical and magical influence. And even yep, without the shield, the extraction would involve Severe cranial trauma. Don't want that. Also, why are his tentacles kind of sticking out? Like, sticking out straight, you know? But, um, how severe? I have I healing magic, no like a stupid <laughs> nerd. But one can only heal so much of their own brain tissue. Yeah. But not to like, worry. truly. Should you transform, I will happily perform a new examination. Yeah, thank you. Thank I just I thank you. Uh say so tell him about the strange mind flayer ship you were on. I think that's the one I end up picking. But it's like I you can see my hand. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Like this is I did not expect this. Like a at all. Mind? Fascinating. I have never set foot on one myself. They were our warships during the greatest eras of the Illithid Empire. Oh, yeah. We ruled the entire astral plane from their decks. The design know that. was lost when the Gith rebelled and ended our dominion. I do kind of wonder how you could lose such a thing, but all kinds of cool things are lost to time, so. Uh, thank you for the information. Of course. I am sorry I cannot assist you in its removal. But <laughs> I have an idea. Oh, I like him, by the way. Perhaps I should start taking notes. There may be a way to bypass that Nerds. stasis. There are many alchemical substances that can influence the mind. Listen, I trust this. I don't know what it is. I I I find him very intriguing. Don't bl I'm sorry. I do not intend to shatter its protection. I need only bypass the interference that prevents me from communicating with the lava. This sounds terrible. This sounds like a terrible idea, honestly. Bypass. A what kind of alchemy are we talking about? Distilled from a collection of rare mushrooms. They have. Subtle <laughs> like poking influence. him. I would require a fresh tongue of madness and timusk spores. But Timus. be warned, in their natural state, both of these mushrooms can oh, be his quite brain is dangerous. Timusks oh, I can see that. cause confusion in those that approach them. The tongue is self-explanatory. 
Truly. Look at he's. I just. Oh my gosh. Uh, level eating those doesn't sound my like a good idea. Will hamper the more harmful effects once the mushrooms are brewed into a. Look potion. at his face. Your sanity, however much you possess, should uh -huh. remain intact. Now, nah, wonderful. Uh, the lovely, so where do course, I find these? Although they are well, quite yeah. rare. And their discovery, perilous. Love hmm. it. I imagine Lenore would have them in her possession. She served Mistra as a cleric. Mistra? I know, I was like, Mistra? Mistra keeps popping up. Um, why would a cleric have a bunch of dangerous mushrooms? But I am just thinking that she keeps, she keeps kind of popping up, and I don't... I don't know. We're probably gonna meet. I assume as Gail's uh, sort of patron, kind of. We're probably gonna see her. She is quite fond of her garden. Lenore has always been a lonely sort. Uh, nature was her only companion. I offered I can her the relate. chance I like to join that. the society, but she refused. Her experiments on Susa Bark took priority. At least it's not an exclusive brother. May your travels be safe. And swift. And a name like Lenore, I trust a name like Lenore because I'm a big fan of Edgar Allan Poe. Is my species evolving? Ooh. Perhaps, but at such an accelerated rate, it has to be an outside influence. Which it is, we Frida know it has is. no problem with you inspecting these goods so long as you're willing to pay for them. Listen, I just wanted to read them. I don't know why I can't freaking read the books. <laughs> I'm just like, it's funny to try to figure out what I'm thinking when I'm pointing at things. How is your more personal research progressing? Not well. The nutrition my species receives from other lands. It's difficult to emulate. Uh, they're talking about brains. They're talking about... <laughs> like, now I'm worried. I'm like, is this guy getting enough nutrients? Like, they're super specialized. They just live off of brains. And you gotta try to substitute that. Legit, I thought the, the blurred guy, the hobgoblin, was talking to, like, a plant, and then an illithid shows up. Could you imagine, like... That would be very traumatic. I really think they almost should have given you an option to like stab him as he comes around the corner. And here I realize, oh, okay, they've got a bunch of piles of bodies. They're doing wiggly wobbly things. And I'm like, oh, they're turning the dead bodies into my kinids. And, but they have a live one here. And so I was like, oh, no. And I was like, should I talk to her first? Or should I talk to him for our, or it first? I don't know if they have gender. They're mushrooms. <laughs> um, don't. But I didn't want to make that guy mad. Their condition is familiar. Poison, but I didn't want to leave her here. Wild weed common to the underdark. She'll need an antidote. The drow soon. poison, most likely held by the poisoner. Listen, I have, I have stuff. Uh, yeah, I have an antidote. Who did this to you? Slashed me. Oh. <sighs> Ooh. Ooh, medicine advantage. Uh, consider what you know of Dur Nope, I don't know what I did. I think I just gave her the antitoxin because I had it. <laughs> you know, it's like, why try to roll for something when I already have the antitoxin? I have got it. Who needs medicine when I can just shove a potion down someone's throat? Ah, oh, God. Whatever that is, I needed it. Why are you helping me? And it worked fast. You're a drow. Yeah, I get that a lot. Uh, no harm in helping him between Underdark folk. We're no. not all zealots, you know, no, Celadrin. I know. I thank you for your help, but I gotta get moving. Oh, Carl's garters. Yeah, oh, well, you got an open wound. I don't have time wound. for this. My kin need me. Yeah, well, you got a hole in your stomach, I think. Honestly, I feel like I was supposed to remember her name, or no? I don't think it was her. No, I don't think it was her name. It was somebody else's name. Uh, you're in no condition to help anyone. Take it easy, tell me what I can do. Seems you're the helping kind. All right. I need you to rescue my kin. Not charity, mind. We can pay. We're Iron Hand Clan. Best I want to be an artificer. Gates. 
We were on an expedition down here when the Dwergar snatched us up. I got away, but not the others. The Greys have them digging out some old ruin across the lake. What was the expedition you were on? Just mining for materials. No. Nothing yeah, Well, the fact that you... The briefest yeah. hesitation. Mm -hmm. But enough. She's lying. Listen, you said... But our work <laughs> pays well. Help my clan, and we'll make it worth your while. I swear. I mean, she's like, the fact that she had to specify, like, oh, yeah, nothing unusual, it's fine. Like, that's a huge red flag, right? Like, if someone intentionally goes out of their way to be like, no, no, everything's above board, it's fine. You're like, uh-huh. <laughs> okay, that's, that's odd that you specified. But here, uh, you're lying. Heck yeah. It's a high roll, though. I was a little worried, but I do have a lot of bonuses. Or a load of bonus, rather. Hey, no, didn't make that one. I think I can re-roll though. Come on, come on, come on, go fast, 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 fast. Yep. I love getting insight checks. Yes. Fine. It's complicated, but my clan has trouble back in the city. A blood feud. Yeah. We were searching for something to turn the uh -huh. tide. That's all I can say. But it's worth a lot to us. Understand? I don't understand blood feuds. I think I went off on a big tangent here about how blood feuds are pointless. And, like, I don't know how they, you know, you could take a lesson from the Mykonids who, like, focus on, like, community. And it's not, like, it's not, it's not working together for the sake of one individual, but for the group as a whole, right? And, like, things like blood feuds, like, I think I was going off about, like, how there's, a, like, you look at Romeo and Juliet, and how Romeo and Juliet wasn't actually a love story, it was, like, a, a deconstruction of, like, not necessarily class, but, like, uh, like, social, well, not social grievances, social, like, socially constructed like ideas or institutions i don't know groups ideologies that like you i don't know i'm butchering it <laughs> i'm totally butchering it but look it up romeo and juliet is not a love story it's like a deconstruction of of how how stupid people can be <laughs> where it's like nobody even knew where the blood feud started with romeo and juliet like their families right the capulets and the montagues um, same thing happens in a Mark Twain book, I think Huckleberry Finn, where it's like he meets a, another young boy who's like, you know, oh, me and my redneck family, we got a feud against this other redneck family, and the two, two, two of the family members are trying to get together, and we can't have that, and the little boy ends up dead in a pointless feud where he specifically says that nobody remembers how it started, but we all know it's their fault, and both sides say that, right? It's just like, that's kind of what Romeo and Juliet is like, it's pointing out like the idiocy of like certain like accepted notions that shouldn't be right like you should you shouldn't like cling to certain traditions just because they're tradition if you don't know what the point is that there's no real point to it and it only causes bloodshed and upset like like anger and fear and pain so no i don't understand <laughs> look you've done me a good turn and you deserve the truth but that's as much of it as i can tell i swear it if you need to go your own way, I respect that, but still, I'm asking. I mean, I can't just leave people. I guess if Thank I you. knew. Only wish I could go with you. But here. I nabbed these boots from the greys when I ran. I'll feel better knowing you're using them to kick some dwegger ass. I'll mark where I made my escape and uh, wait here, I suppose. Not much choice, eh? I was worried that she would uh, potentially be turned into a mushroom, but I think that was only happening because she was dying, and so they brought her here to be turned into a mycanid. Um. Outlander, a noble endeavor. Effectively use a noble stock mushroom, which I haven't done. I remember being confused about that. Um. But I... Yeah, who knows what I was doing here. <laughs> we'll move forward. But I'm very excited to talk to Sovereign. They look what amazing. The the Sovereign's thick fingers look stroke at that. the corpse at its feet. A droning melody greets you as the creature turns its gaze to you. It's stunning! Fresh talker. I show you a memory. 
Watch and listen. A violent vision grips you. Dwegar, dark dwarves chopping myconid remains. Yikes. Copies. They killed our young. The Sovereign's song slows to the pace of a dirge. It is still in mourning. I love this. We laid waste to many, but intruders remain. Lakewood. The Sovereign's song halts as it measures your worth. I sense your resolve. You will find Dwergar invaders near Lake's Edge. Cleanse the rot. Destroy them. Dwegar killed their children. They should pay the price for the cruelty. Oh, well, thank you, Will. Yeah. No, I'm def. Oh, yeah. Oath of the Ancients. I'm definitely bound by this. I will cleanse the rot. I will visit nature's wrath upon them. Like, this is, this is something right up a paladin's alley, right? Like, normally, maybe I'd be like, maybe there's two sides to this argument. And maybe there is. But, uh, I'm definitely, as a p nature paladin, siding with the Myconids. Like, I just, I have to. An illusion comes over you. A Dwergar choking on a cloud of gleaming dust. Accept this gift. Oh. It will help you exterminate. <gasps> Spoilers? I forgot I had those. <laughs> I don't think I used them at all. <laughs> oh my the suffering gifts you one more vision. A wall of vines parting to reveal glowing light. Love that. Riches of magic and mind. Cleanse the rot, and they are yours. You do the circle a service. We will await word. I did wonder if it was like a druid thing with the circle, but... Deep uh... purple swirl into familiar shapes. Gnomes in mining gear, chased by Dwegar. The Dwegar seek a gnome. It is a guest. Oh, okay. You harbor a fugitive gnome. Admirable of you. The Sovereign says nothing, but you hear appreciation in its song. I didn't realize that uh, they would they would harbor somebody like that at the risk of their um of their own children, or if that's like separate. It greets you with a harrowing elegy, cheerless as the new moon. I love this method of communication, right? The idea of, I'm, I'm super big fan of this kind of stuff in fantasy, in sci-fi, like musical communication of some sort. This is like telepathic ones, but like it's almost like sight, scent, sound, like it's really, really cool. Um, anyway, how can I not, how can I not help mushroom people, like... They're just so cool. And Sovereign's design, like, legitimately, I would love to have, like, some art of Sovereign. And I was curious if the children were just, like, if they have, like, children in, like, a normal air quote sense. Or if they, uh, or, like, I guess, like, sexual reproduction type way. Or if they just, uh, if they colonize, essentially, like, dead bodies and they pre-produce like that. Um, but honestly, I think I remember going off about how, um, it's actually not a bad idea, right? Like, their children were stolen from them, so they take the dead bodies of those who killed their children and turn them into their children, is, is how I was kind of thinking, maybe. And, like, how it's, like, a waste not, want not. Like, mushrooms are an incredibly important part. I watched a whole documentary on mushrooms a couple weeks ago. Like, is on, is on Netflix. It was really, really good. It's, like, the Mushroom Netflix documentary. Um, I even found a new book I could read, too. Um, but in a song there's just there's so much cool the stuff with people mouth. doing with with mushroom like science you know like cool science stuff that people are doing and I'm just like I never knew there was like this whole world but in the past couple years I've learned like there's so many cool things and like how how connected the mushroom like roots are Fresh oh yeah Tongue I love their names for me you hail from the dark Yet far you've he come. sounds like a like reach into memory tell me of he home. has a familiar-ish sounding voice 
Oath of the Ancients, bring to mind of a verdant glade, an oath, a verdant glade safe from harm. I am, I am bound to this. <laughs> it reveals its own home in reply, a humid cove filled with decaying mycelium. At first, corpses. I was like, "Oh, is that normal?" It is. It is not normal. Breda destroyed my people. I am a sovereign with no So it's like circle. a mushroom circle thing. This circle does not welcome me. Well, me. you're a sovereign. But I have heard the song. You mean to cleanse the Dwergar rot. I mean to join you. He's kind of designed like a villain, which is kind of unfair because I was like totally stoked to have like a mushroom friend, you know? Um, but like, it's almost like he was designed to look unhappy. But it's like, I'm curious why they wouldn't let him in, but he is a king entity, you know? I am the danger, and I am the king. Oh, yeah? They erased my people. Also, uh, check out that creature in the background. Not right now, but earlier. I remember distinctly pointing that out and being like, what the frick was that? Um, what threat do you pose to Dwegar? In death, your foe becomes your ah. ally. I will raise it. You may come I love this. This is why one of the reasons I wanted to do a druid, which I have made a druid that I haven't played, but Circle of Spore um, druid, because uh, I like the idea of like the natural order of things, including an entropic aspect to it. Um, being able to raise the dead, like right now, like as a oath of the ancients paladin, I'm very, I'm mostly against the undead, uh, supposedly, but I feel like as if you wiggle roomed it to include, you know, entropic entities, it's like the un undeath is not necessarily <laughs> a going against. Um, it's like reusing and recycling, you know what I mean? Like you're like, oh, dead body, well, let's just use that for a bit, and then you let it. The thing about the circle of spore druids is that they have to like return it eventually like, like the corpse goes back eventually if you try to keep it for too long it kind of pushes the oath of the ancients like paladin-y things and it pushes the natural order of things but um reusing and recycling <laughs> that's what mushrooms do i've seen you guys i've seen some amazing mushrooms out here in northern california maybe i can put some pictures in i don't know if i have time but um I'm in a very, like, a wet, mountainy area, and so we just get, there's so many cool mushrooms out here. Anyway, I'm gonna stop being, talking about real life. <laughs> Remain in the Underdark. Right, so I, just, I have to stay down here. Follow. I get we a friend. The rot together. I kind of see the circles as being a little bit more insular, so that's why they wouldn't let him in necessarily, which makes me feel bad. It's like, hey man, like, you just lost everybody, you know, like, you'd think another circle would let him in, but maybe not. However, now we have this entity, like we said, reuse, recycle. This is, what is this, the, the night hooks or whatever they're called, I think? A hook horror, yeah, I remember reading about these in the Drizzt books, but holy cow, look at it. This mushroom, my kinid person, is really, really cool looking, but this thing is horrifying. It's like, I can't look away from it. It's beautiful and terrifying at the same time. Monstrosity oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's interesting. Looks like I'm swearing off mushroom soup. Yeah, I think that's probably smart, probably wise under these conditions. But I was horrified. I was like, this looks like something straight out of a nightmare. Jeez Louise. <laughs> like, I can't handle it. It's so horrible. It's. To oh, did you Creature hear those voices? Song rumbles within you. Neither warm nor welcoming. Purple's my favorite color. So, this mic in it is very, very neat. But I do like the. I do like most of them. I really. I'll have to get some art commission of these. I think. I just think they're so great. And I look at that, and I was like, ooh, it looks like a delirium tree from Dragon Age. A delirium veins from Dragon Age, rather. Not, not a delirium tree, but... 
Oh yeah, there's a person. A drow. Play nice. Or these shrooms I, I've been playing nice. Now, doubt you'd care to notice, but you didn't see a dwarf on your travels, did you? Balin's his name. Uh, I actually didn't. Um... Why would I deceive her? Can you describe him? Bald, blue tunic, dumb as a stick. Oh, uh, classic uh, dwarven woman talking about her husband or something. Right. Never mind. <laughs> okay, who is he to you? My useless yep. husband. Sent him for an errand. It's no surprise he's made a mess of it. Uh, need help finding him? Knock yourself out. But don't come begging for coin if you find him. You try to ransom him to me. You'll find yourself skint and stuck with a fat old guy. I mean, she really doesn't seem like the type that's like, um, actually beat up about it. You know, she's like, well, well, easy come, easy go, I guess. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I think I just I do, like, a massive inventory. Like I try to, like, empty out my inventory. I'm really bad at this sort of a thing. Like, leaving it till it's, like, so much, you know? Want Master back. He treats me good now. Doesn't oh. kick me anymore. Interesting. I have actually completed this stuff at this point now. So knowing what I know now, I'm I'm, I'm intrigued. I wonder if I'll hear more from them. I think this is the treasure room, like the the vine room that uh, that he showed me, where he was like, "Ooh, what's curious?" He didn't say anything. He didn't tell me anything. I think, yeah, it's impossible to lockpick, but I'll get it anyway, eventually. Oh yeah, we go back, because I'm like, hey, let's see if they have anything else to say, these two. Like, of course, I, I think I really would want to choose with an illithid. Welcome back. Have you made any new discoveries? Oh, your kind tend to be slaves down here, it's true. <laughs> it's true that many of my brethren are enslaved here, but my intellect has secured my freedom. It is my hope that my research will lead to liberation and peace for my people. Such designs are part of why I've devoted myself to studying the Myconids. Research in the Underdark sounds like a dangerous prospect. Yes, but it has abundant natural resources, spores, Water orbs, Trillimac. I've studied them for years. There is rare magic in the Underdark, too. Fairsress. It radiates from the earth, warping teleportation oh, and divination magic. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, it is. This is an excellent place, I would think, to study a people in real time who have learned to coexist with their environment and each other. I don't know how well they'd coexist with others. Obviously, they, do, they don't get along very well with the Dwegar. Um, but a, a collective entity based off of mushroom ideology, I guess I could say, um, would be an excellent place to try to learn like how to incorporate... like better food options, better water, you know, better living situations so that maybe people can get along a little better with basic needs met, maybe? But, yeah, our people aren't inclined to get along. And yet we are all in need. Imagine what creativity would bloom if no craftsman starved, if every wizard had spell materials. See, and this is that this is that whole sort of sort of utopic, but not really, because utopias are actually kind of scary, really, um, when put into practice. It seems, at least in fiction, um, but the idea is right. Like you have like all your basic necessities covered, and if there's enough resources to go around, then people wouldn't feel the need to like war over them or war over differences, you know. And the idea is good, right? And like it could maybe work. But especially with cultures down here, like the Drow, like the Dwegar, who have like violence and, and high, high rates of individualism, 
um, like built into them, even though they're kind of couched in this like way where they actually benefit the few instead of like, you know, everybody, even with like high rates of individualism, only a few people actually benefit from that <laughs> capitalism, <laughs> you know, but like, you know, I, I don't know. I, I love his idea, right? That like, if he can like grow things properly down here, or not grow things properly, because things already grow properly, but make it more uh, available, you know, make it, maybe make it more efficient, you know, for everybody to participate in, you know, like he's got great ideas, but this, the, the, what is it? The skeptic in me is like, listen, like, I don't know how well that's going to work, especially if you don't take, I don't know. I mean, he's taking cultural stuff into account, but he might just be a bit too, like, logical about it, and people of any species, race, whatever, are anything but logical, and trying to remove tradition is tough. I observed the fight from a distance. Combat is not my field of expertise, but the Myconids handled themselves well enough. That's good to know. And of course I want to talk to this guy. Have you spoken... I greet you, child I of love the that. dark. How has your search for That's the, the nicest thing failed? anybody's called me in relation to my race. <laughs> child of the dog. Uh, oh. How did you escape your colony? I was born with a propensity for arcane magic my oh. people despise. It gave me the strength to resist the I didn't know that. Brain. Every waking hour, I pushed back against its dire hold. My wizardry empowered me. The moment its control shattered, I fled. Before the colony discovered, I had defected. So that's fascinating. Like I would obviously, I really would love to talk to the Illith. Love to talk to. I would love to talk to the Illith to like get more of an insight on like Mind Flayer, like uh, like behavioral, I guess, like sociological patterns um and this was something that was that was very interesting to to figure out that like wizardry is apparently a no-no for them you need brains in the beginning i had an arrangement As one does. with a lich excellent company despite I what would, one yeah. would expect i required brains he required souls a perfect symbiosis but our ambitions eventually splintered. I wished to better the world, and he preferred yeah. its rot. So I left his company, and thus I now feed from those who act against uh, the society's goals. A twisty goals. path to be on, for sure. <laughs> so this guy just like he's like uh, this politician wouldn't let our. Um, our, our water orb growing plot uh, be allocated properly, so now I'm going to eat his brain, you know? It's like, eh, but I assume he just means, like, anybody who's probably attacking them? Uh, which, you know, could be a lot of people down here. The Underdark is still probably a good place for that. Perhaps the peoples of the Underdark will be less inclined to violence. If they comprehend the cost. I yes. mean, that's a that's a bold statement to make from uh, from a, a race that's done a lot of oppressing. But okay. I have never seen anything like it, <laughs> But you can't. I mean, obviously, evolving. you can't just blame one guy. And I think it's a fascinating decision to have an illithid, a mind player, who is like not typical. Like you just assume. Again, you just assume that all these people are potentially going to be, you know, monoliths, right? But even the illithids, who are like the big bad evils in a lot of ways, for one thing, they're being manipulated here. And for another thing, now we have one who was like able to break free because they had like the, 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 the what is it though? The willpower, the magical assistance, I guess. So it's just. It's fascinating stuff, and I know I'm not doing it justice because I'm kind of haphazardly watching this and recording this audio at the same time, but here we go. Well, and I am not really seeing much else. I'm looting. I looted some people. We take. Oh yeah, we're getting closer and closer to the um to the village. So we found some of the dead gnomes, I believe, who used to live here, or who used to mine here. 
Um, but we'll get to that in the next part, so I hope this episode was kind of fun, interesting, I don't know, this, I will try to not, to not let this happen again. This is a once every, like, blue moon year occurrence, once a solar eclipse occurrence, so hopefully we're not due for another one soon, but... Uh, but first, or er, before I go, I'd like to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, including my Acorn Tier patrons. Thank you so much, Fane, for being a longtime supporter at the Acorn Tier. I appreciate it very much. And I want to give an extra special shout out to my Skeleto, my Sapling Tier patron. Thank you so much for your long-term support. I really don't, I don't deserve all this kindness you guys give, but I do appreciate it, even if I'm not very consistent with videos. Um... Really quick before I go, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, including the Acorns, Fane. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And I want to give an extra special shout out to Reese Galito, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your longtime support. I very much appreciate it. And I want to give an extra, extra, extra special shout out to Christopher, my forest tier patron, who has literally gone above and beyond even the forest tier patron at this point. I don't know how much, I don't know how many, how many more trees I can fit into the forest. <laughs> thank you so much for your support it has been very kind um honestly for all of you patrons supporting me and have been supporting me for a while i i really i know i don't deserve it a ton because i'm not very consistent with videos um but and i'm not consistent with patron updates and all these things i'm not very consistent but i appreciate you guys uh, being along for the ride and supporting me however you can so thank you all again for watching and i hope to see you in the next one